we are talking about the right hook. And for me, there's one piece of music from boxing which has the best hook in the world. And you've probably heard this before. Yep, my first Seville Barak is from the A-team. Mr. T was on it, and I think he won the first fight. And I used to love watching the A-team in the 1980s because of B.A. Barakas. So today we are talking about the right hook. And before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge the respect to elders past, present, and emerging. Now, please share this with everybody. I want to get as many people in the room as possible. And this is being recorded for a podcast. But uh, I'd like to introduce my co host and guest of the day. So, Jan, please introduce yourself to everybody and tell people what you do. Thank you, partner. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, together with Roy, Lassa, and Martin, my name is Jan Santos. I'm a podcast agency owner and a podcaster as well. What we do is we push your brand and business to the next level by utilizing creative content and podcasts. I'm excited to share. I'm excited to learn as well. Back to you, partner. So, Lata, please introduce yourself and tell people what you do. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Nice to see you all. My name is Lata, and we partner with B2B medium-sized businesses to create an exceptional online presence. And we are based in Auckland and also Melbourne, Australia. Thanks. Over to you, Martin. No, brilliant. Thanks for joining us today. And, and Roy, please introduce yourself and tell people what you do. Thanks. Thanks so much, Martin. Now, my name is Roy Kowalski. I'm based in Sydney, Australia. I'm a branding and marketing specialist working with Fortune 500 companies and medium-sized companies with their branding and marketing requirements. Um, and the area that I specialize in is brand awareness and visibility. And isn't that the essence of, uh, you know, of companies that want to be seen, heard, and remembered? Um, nobody wants the best kept secret. Now, my job is to make sure that people see you, hear about you, and start to use you. Thanks so much, Martin. So, for people who've just joined us again, so this morning I was interviewed by a TV station in Chicago. They reached out to me from another social media post. And when I tell them what I do, it's basically this music. I organize boxing competitions for the LGBTQ plus community. I'm also a keynote speaker on courage and I help people make an impact and achieve business success on LinkedIn. Now, when I think about your hook and the right hook, it's the best move I have in boxing. Hook is more than that. It's the reason why you, why should somebody want to engage with you with 1 billion members on LinkedIn? So that track is called the Eye of the Tiger. So imagine big conglomerates, Tiger Enterprises Limited, and the CEO and the board on LinkedIn. Corporate executives make up 1% of all members on LinkedIn. I can imagine that influence and buying power is absolutely skyrocketing what we would all like to achieve. Decision makers make up 6.5% of all makers on LinkedIn. So for every person who isn't a decision maker, they have 13 people reaching out for them for attention. How do we attract attention? We have the right hook. And it's you. You know, why should somebody connect with you? Have a look at other people's LinkedIn profiles. Have a look at your own LinkedIn profile. What does your message say about you? So for me, the right hook is something which is short, clear, explains to you customers who you are, what problems you are solving, and maybe some success you can help them with. So my course, Make an Impact and Achieve Business Success on LinkedIn. In today's world, you need to make an impact. We're in the attention economy, and I want to help people be successful. So my first question to you, Jan, in podcasting, podcasting is very competitive, what is it in a podcast name that really captures attention? A strong hook is an essential tool 
for grabbing your audience or your tribe's attention. You know, you want them to continue listening, engaging, or even watching the content that you create. In the context of podcasting, this is very important, not only on the visuals, but in the beginning of your episode, maybe even if you're recording a long form, a mid form, or short form, it's very important to start with a bang. You know, I always teach this. I always help people in creating content and doing podcasts to start with a bang. Gone are the days that you have an OBB, you know, an opening billboard, or an intro with the formal music. That's that's done. Put that in a garbage can and move forward. Start with the bang. Go straight to the point. The first few seconds or lines of your content are the most important thing in your podcast or in your brand when you're dealing with videos or audio. So make sure that you're packed with something that will pick your audience or your tribe's interest. Now, this could be a surprising fact, a thought-provoking question, a poll, or a suspenseful anecdote. It depends on your character, your vibe. I all, In my podcast, sometimes I throw in a, an intro joke or a game that is connected to the topic that my guests will be focusing on. So there's a lot of ways. Thanks, thanks, Jan. When I think about a message, a simple statement, think about your famous, your, your, your favorite book, how to, win friend, how to win friends and influence people. Never split the difference. Who Moved My Cheese, one of my favorite books about change management. Those are the things which have captured our attention straight away. The use of superlatives. If you're working in marketing services, I help you with your marketing. It is pretty black brand and generic. I help improve your marketing to win the best clients for you. It's just something different. It's got that oomph. It's got the pizzazz. So first we're going to ask you, if you like in this room, please reshare. Get other people to join us today. So, Lata, please tell people how you help your clients with their brand messaging, because it's something which is so important in today's world. Sure, perfectly. So, the first, first important thing that we take care of first, because when you connect with new people, the first thing they're going to see is your tagline. The tagline is the first important brand message you're telling people whether they have to accept the connection or not, right? And we spend quite a lot of time in crafting, as John said, first line of the content is the most important. So even we do like, we have a criteria about what should the first line be. We wouldn't have more than six to seven words and it should have a hook. So, and also we are finding some similarities with the readers because when you, when they find any similarity with what they're talking about, that builds trust. So the first line um, on your profile and the first line of the content is so much more important to grow the audience. And that's something, um, in terms of LinkedIn, that's what we help our clients with. Thank you. Over to you, Martin. No, thank, thanks very much, Letta. There's a line in the song, The Eye of the Tiger, which really captures my attention. And it's really important today in the world's economy. So it's, you know, that the cream of the, of the fight rising up to the challenge of our rival. So in the competitive landscape, there's something different. There's something that you can create that you can have there. If people are going to look at your profile, they might spend five seconds looking at that. If they're considering 10 businesses in their area and you're on their list, are they going to spend five seconds, 50 seconds, five minutes? Will that then become into five hours through meetings, doing work for them? Is that a five-day engagement, a five-week engagement, a five-month engagement? They can look at your profile for five minutes for five seconds five seconds becomes five minutes becomes a 30 minute conversation it's as simple as that now roy with your products i love audi the making of the coffee their brand logo 
when it comes to visualizations, how is this really important to really have that compelling crop? Because it's not just about the words, it's the images that go with it. Absolutely. So um, so I like to refer to you know my right hook as the impact that the products make. Uh, and what I mean by that is, you know, um, I had someone at my office this morning that was telling me that they, they work with a promotional product company. And the way that the company works with them is they, they give them a catalog and they say, have a look and choose what you like. And I showed him that the way I work is completely different. I'm outcomes driven. I want to deliver results. I want people to see that if you provide a product to them, they they achieve something from it. That uh, Those Audi rings that we did as a template to, to, to sprinkle the, the cinnamon on top of the coffee, that's an experience that that Audi gave to their customers. And guess what? That is an experience that people took away with them. And in my kind of business, that's the right hook, is making sure that you punch hard enough to leave an impact. My name is Roy. Now, I can tell you, as a boxer, most people will lead with the jab. Jab is probably 60% in a fight, and it's actually a bit of a defensive move. But it's the hooks, it's the uppercuts that really land. Those are the things that people remember. Remember, this is about storytelling. A hook, a title of a book, it may be a great book. And, for example, Spare, I think, is a great title of a book. I probably don't want to read it. There are probably other books that I'd choose to read. Simon Sinek, it starts with why. His message is so clear. It has to have a story. And this is where you spark curiosity with your story. For me, a story has three essential things. It has characters which connect with the audience. As a keynote speaker on courage, when I get people up in boxing stance, keeping their guard off or doing we will rock you, I'm involving them. Next thing is there's a message being conveyed. Who moved my cheese? Read that book. It's a perfect book about change management because somebody was a bit of a stuck in the mud, realized they were missing out, and then got on board with something. So there's got to be something happening to an audience. It's conveying that message. It's relatable. Think about your favorite book. You go to your favorite coffee shop, and you might see somebody reading that book, and you have a conversation saying, Wow, I really love this author. You want to buy more books from the author, or you want to see the next series when it comes online on Netflix or Disney or any of those streaming platforms. No competition. And the final thing is call to action. What do you want people to do? There's a relationship with buying. You're taking people through a journey. I'm going to say right now, if you want to learn how to do LinkedIn well, just go on my bio, go on my profile, check out my link which is the link to, to my course. You want to learn how to do LinkedIn well? It's there for you. Whether they're sharing successes, sharing advice, sharing tips, supporting other people, building the community, supporting others, reciprocity, because your story is something that others want to be involved in. You're involved in other people's stories. People will be talking about you. Are they talking positively? Are they recommending you? Are they giving you those referrals? which we all want on LinkedIn. So, Jan, quick question for you. For somebody who has a story they want to share, what are some tips for them to actually get in their story out there? When you highlight a common struggle or a challenge, you are now giving a teaser, something that you experience that your tribe also has experienced. Many people are drawn to content that addresses their own struggles stories, and challenges. So if you can identify a common pain point for your audience, for your tribe, highlighting it in your hook can be a very effective way to capture their attention. Now, an example of this is like very basic how to grow your views on YouTube. So now if your tribe is creating content and they are suffering, for them it's a challenge, that is one way to grab their attention because you are now sharing a value, an, a possible answer for their pain point, for their question. And you can go specifically niche down based on how and your tribe and your followers react. So again, 
highlight a common struggle or challenge connected to the story. Back to you, partner. No, brilliant. Thanks, Jen. That latter, I love the post you did the other day where you shared your favorite books, books that you recommend other people to read. So what do you look for in a good story? And what tips do you have for people who are wanting to share their story through their online presence? Sure, sure. Thank you, Martin. Um, I write five posts a week, right? So every every weekday. So these are some of the things that I usually write about. I'll still give you some examples for you to understand too. So I love the intriguing situations where people get more interested, where I tell them something fascinating for them. Example, I start my post with, I hate contracts. Then we'll be like, what is she going to talk about? Then they read the right hook, but then I make them read. For example, I'm stressed. I'm not stressed. I'm going to explain why I'm not stressed. That's something that attracts a lot of attention. The second one that attracts the most attention is the personal stories. You may think like, oh, we are on LinkedIn. We don't have to share the personal story. But people try to connect the dots. The dots between your business and your personal life. When they know more about you, again, that builds attention and builds trust. And family, kids, especially pets, people love them. And the biggest one that I, whenever I share, gets the most attention is my business journey. The problem that I faced six years ago and where I am currently, the twist in the story is something people like. So these three components, I would say, is something works really best. That attracts easily 10,000 to 50,000 impressions every single time. Over to you, Martin. Thanks, Lata. I love that. And I really love how you shared books that you want to read. Because thought leadership is not just about, about your thoughts things that you find influential that others will find beneficial. Now, Roy, my final component of storytelling is the call to action. And you have the best person in the world giving you call to actions. It's a young lad. Love watching those videos. What are your tips for that call to action? Yeah, no, that's a, that little youngster is quite incredible. And I'm, I'm actually busy, you know, trying to set up another little series with, with, uh, with Michael Field. He's got three children. Um, so this this whole aspect of the call to action is um, the the way I frame it with my content is um, it's kind of a um, it's kind of a something that I do every single you know every single time I do a similar type of post and the way I the way I articulate it is like this this customer had this particular problem I use these products to help this customer overcome this particular challenge problem. And this was the outcome. So in other words, I show how it solved the problem for that particular customer. And then what I do is I say, if this resonates with you, we should be talking. Now, I might not get a result every single time I write that post. But guess what happens? I get into people's heads that when they have this similar problem, I want to be front of mind. So my content keeps ringing around every week with the same principle. So that when somebody's ready to purchase, I'm front of mind. Back to you, Martin. So that leads into the final point, Roy, because it's when somebody's ready to purchase. There are five stages of customer roadmap, awareness, consideration, decision, procurement, process. There was actually seeing what the strategy was, who the available suppliers were, what products and services are needed, and then engage in the market. Now, during that process, there's a lot of research of the available suppliers in the market. Who were the leaders? Now, imagine you are watching the toughest stage of La Tour de France. It's the toughest hill climb. And you have the leader is being followed by the peloton. You are the person leading. The peloton is chasing you because they want to be at the top of the hill with you. Now, you have two options. You can take them on a direct path that will be successful or you can go sidetrack here, sidetrack there. So rather than it being a tandem, you're the front rider and the person chasing you, take them on a tangent. You confuse people. For me, 
a conversation with mum when I say, oh, where are you going this weekend? She'll tell me in about five minutes time. She'll tell you different stories. But if I wanted to know where they were going this weekend so I could send them a gift, be there or what, and being consistent every single time you engage on LinkedIn to your content, when you're going to networking events, when you're having conversations, this is what you do. They ask, oh, well, I might need help with something. I can reach out to you. Or a friend of mine needs help with this. I'll refer them to you. We want our clients to be big referring to us. We want them to be advocates for us. So always remember that simple, clear message, your story, always be on point. I'm not sure how many Rocky films have been right now. The first one won the Oscar. The second, third, fourth, fifth one, they weren't as good, but they were very successful. So your story has to be repeatable. People have to get things from the audience. Please raise your hands. We're going to join us on stage. If not, we'll, we'll, we'll have some more conversations and we'll start closing down. So, Jan, a question for you is for somebody who's been doing, say, a podcast for two or three times, why is consistency key? You don't stop. You consistently focus on what is working and you consistently create Eventually, you know, it's going to be like a snowball effect. It, it will grow big depending on what your parameter you're looking at. If you're aiming for, you know, growth, uh, leads, there's a lot. But it all is connected in consistency. You will not win if you are not consistent. Back to you, Bart. Thanks. Thanks, partner. Thanks. Thanks very much. And it's one of those things, if you're consistent, you're not going to win. So... Latter, you have recently moved to Melbourne and you've made connections straight away. You're growing your business. Your story is out there. So what tips do you have for somebody to just, just to be consistent, to persevere those stories that you were sharing earlier with us? Sure. Thank you, Martin. Yes, I recently moved to Melbourne the very, very second day. I reached here on a Saturday. The very second day I was there and the networking group meetings, meeting people consistently, connecting with them on LinkedIn, connecting with them on other social media platforms. Consistency is the key. And I want to quickly share the data. I have it in front of me. I started posting five days a week from the 1st of July this year. Previously, I was doing one or two or three posts a week, maximum. My data shows, compared to the last 365 days, I grew 6,294% in terms of in impressions. 6,294%. So I think consistently when we share, when people know about the story, of course, you're giving away so many information, but people will know more about us. And actually, that gives us a lot of uh, inbound leads as well, because we are talking about a specific thing. And consistency, I I wouldn't take away for that. We consistently connect with the right people, 200 people. Of course, I have someone who does it for me every single week. I have given them who to connect. Um, Content-wise, I keep writing the content every single week. So as Jan said, we cannot take consistency out of it. Once that is done, it's almost like we are quitting. So Brilliant. Thank you so much, Lata. It's, we have about three minutes left. I'd just like to thank everybody in the audience for joining us today. I really appreciate your time. I'm going to give a shout out to you know, I really love your content, your advice on LinkedIn. I learned heaps from you. I'm going to give a big shout out to Meryl, who is always here week after week, and a big shout out to Jeremy Grandstaff. We're collaborating on something which is going to be really interesting and in how we can expand and grow the impact of, of LinkedIn. And a big thank you to everybody who's joining us. Now, we've got one minute left, and we're going to close. I'm going to ask everybody to share on stage how they can help others and how you can help them. I'm going to ask Roy, how can you can help people and how can I help you? Well, um, I'll, I'll put it as simply as possible. Um, the way you can help me is listen out for companies that are struggling to get visibility and brand awareness. Um, 
it's as simple as it gets. I'm on LinkedIn um, literally six, six, six times a week posting content. I'm engaging in other people's. You can get out of me on LinkedIn any time of, any time of the day. And um, I'm looking for medium-sized companies that are struggling with visibility and brand awareness. My name is Roy Nona. Brilliant. Thanks, Roy. And same with you, Jan. Closing case statement. How can you help others and how can others help you? Thank you. Everyone, if you want to start a podcast, if you're a brand, if you're a business, and you want to jump and start your podcast journey, creative content, video, audio, then send me a message. We will be glad to help you. Me and with my partner, Martin, we are here to serve you. Also, we are creating a lot of free content for you like this session. This will be recorded. This is going to be released as a podcast episode. You can click the link on my profile. It will go strictly to YouTube. We are also available in Apple Podcasts and Spotify. So there you have it. My name is Jan. Love you all. Whoop, whoop. Back to you, Martin. Brilliant. Thanks. Thanks very much, Jan. Love to ask same question to you. How can you help people and how can they help you? Thank you, Martin. So if any of you have any questions related to LinkedIn, how you can use or B2B, please you connect with me. Ask me any questions you have on the LinkedIn message. I'm happy to answer that anytime. I may send you a audio message but I'm happy to help you at any time. How you can help me is when people are saying, I know what to do in marketing, but I don't have time. If it's you. Thanks, Latter. And I'm going to close. If I can help you with LinkedIn, just go on my profile, click on the link and reach out to me directly. And finally, this is my right hook. This is the reason I'm, I'm doing the stuff that I've been doing for the last four years. I'm asking you to be an ally. I'm asking you to speak out against racism, anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, homophobia, transphobia. I've spent years doing this. We need more allies. We need to show the world who we are, who we show up for. You know, people speak up for me, I speak up for them. So that's how you can help me right now and how you can help every single other person on this planet because kindness is so much more impactful than being mean-spirited and you're also kind-hearted, compassionate people. So thanks very much for your time and we will see you all next week. There you have it, guys. That is a live session that we made on LinkedIn. It's focused on the right hook, right hook in writing, in the profile, in the product, you know, business planning strategy, creative content, social media, podcasting, name it. We talked about it. So check out the full episode, the full recording from that live audio session that will be released on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, YouTube, and the rest of social media. Love you all. This is Jan Santa saying, have a positive outlook in mind. Smile. God bless you. Bye.